Today we are going to learn something about carburetors. carburetors. All right, now here's the thing. There are so many different types and it's different styles, different brands. All these carburetors here are different. There's something different about them, every one of them. And so people keep getting the wrong information to go to these websites and people have their it's almost like politics when it comes to carburetor. They have their opinion about a carburetor, and sometimes they're dead wrong. But let's just uh, take a look at some carburetors here first. Let's take a look at this awesome thing. Now that is a tiny little Holly, Holly one, one, barrel. one barrel. Let's go to the next one. That's a Holly two barrel. Two barrel. Now let's take a look at that. So there's one barrel. One barrel. There's two barrels. Two barrels. All right. Yay. Now, yes, indeed, they made a one barrel, two barrel, and a four barrel. Well, Yay. no, they made a one barrel, two barrel, and a three barrel. Three barrel. Yes, they did. They made a three barrel. So you can take a look at that. Okay. Now, then they made a four barrel. Four barrel. Let's Check. take a look at that. There you go. Okay. One, two, three, four. There's our four barrel. Yeah. Then they There's made a six, pack. a six pack or a six barrel. Six barrel. And of course, the big dual quad, eight oh. barrels. All right. So that's. There's a lot of decisions to make. These are all Hollies, every one of these. Yeah, these are all Hollies. So there's a lot of decisions to be made there, possibly. But let's go take a look at these here. Do we want to have a small, little, tiny 390 carburetor? Maybe. Maybe we want maybe a 750. Maybe a 750. Maybe we want a 650. Or do we want a double pumper? So it's got a accelerator pump on the secondary as well as a accelerator pump on the primary. Or do we want a vacuum secondary? Then what if we decide, we decide that we want a Carter? Do you want an AFB? Or do you want an ABS? Or maybe you want a thermoquad. Or maybe you want, speaking of thermoquads, that's a spread bore carburetor. You want to flip that over so we can see what a spread bore looks like? Sure. So we have here a nice little, kind of big, spread bore carburetor. Spread bore. Spread bore. Okay. So now we have another spread bore. This is a Holly, but it is a Ford Motorcraft type design. This here are Hollies. This first one here is a double pumper double pumper this one here is a vacuum secondary they're both spread bore and then we have the rochester quadrajet rochester quadrajet that came in chevrolet's from 1965 till who knows when they've been around for a long time obviously they must be good because the factory trusted them they didn't want warranty work so those are pretty good carburetors yes they're. we'll take a look a little bit at them and see how they're designed and then decide maybe, hmm, maybe you want to change it. Maybe you want to keep it the same. Yeah. You get all kinds of information when you go on these different websites and you ask a question. There are people throwing stuff out there and some of it is opinionated. And we don't care about opinions. We're going to take a look at a little Facts. bit how they work. Yeah, we're going, to, we're going to do a quickie little demonstration. So the first thing you need to know is, which most people do know this, but the first thing you need to know is the job of a carburetor is to mix the gas in the air. Mm -hmm. And the better job it does, the more horsepower and torque the engine makes. Also, the lower the emissions. So you get a little bonus out of making power. So the better job we do of mixing, the more horsepower we make, the more torque we make. So we're going to do a demonstration on how well mixing gas does. And why it's important so come on let's go do that this represents fuel that's actual fuel but what we're going to do here is we're going to demonstrate 
what happens when you fix mix fuel better with oxygen. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this paper, we're going to soak it like so. Get all over there. Take this one, mix it with fuel. Just so it burns good, that's all we're doing this for. Okay, we're going to take this one, we're going to ball it up. So this is a blob of fuel here, but it's the exact same amount of fuel. Alrighty then. What's, so here's the question. What's going to burn faster? The crumbled up bowl right here? And more complete. What's going to burn faster? Alrighty then. All right, now, that piece of paper is gone. It's actually not even burning. But look at the ball still. Yeah, it's still burning. Why? Because there's less oxygen. Yeah, it's struggling to get the oxygen around the fuel to burn. So when the oxygen finally gets there, you see the fire. Now that's the exact same amount of fuel. Look how fast the other one burnt. Yep. It burnt pretty fast. We're still burning. Now, remember, when this engine is running, it does its intake, compresses it, and blows it up. It pushes what's left out the tailpipe. You can see that this over here is still burning. That's the exact same amount of fuel. That one there is like a good carburetor. It has mixed the fuel well. And this one is like one that did not mix it well. So the end result is, is we put more hydrocarbons out in the exhaust. In the exhaust. Hydrocarbons are unburnt gasoline. Okay, Jacob. Now, the part that mixes the fuel in these carburetors are down here. It's called a discharge nozzle. There are several different types. Uh, in, in Hollies especially, they have a down leg, which maybe you can see. They got this straight leg. These carters, this AFB, AFB stands for aluminum four barrel. It's got all four corners have a mixer in it. And this ABS, it has nice little mixers in the primary. And then it has a tube, and I don't think you can see the tube down there. Let me see. Yeah, I think maybe you can see the tube. Okay, so this does not have a mixer or a discharge nozzle it has a tube this carter uh, thermal quad has the same thing as the abs this holly has a different type of discharge nozzle called an annular discharge those are pretty much the best now these carburetors that are made for gas mileage like the spread bores like this thermal quad, it has a multiple venturi discharge nozzle. It does a super good job mixing that fuel. And the secondary, just like the ABS, has a dump tube, and I, I, it's hard to see it. It's down there. Maybe you can see it. This Rochester, it has a multiple venturi discharge nozzle it also mixes the fuel very well on the primary and then it has this tube right here that drops the fuel out for the secondary the carburetor is better if your goal is to get economy and gas mileage you need to do one of these type of carburetors spread bore small primary large secondary these carburetors will get very good gas mileage and they will have very good performance all of these spread boards will do that. This carburetor I like because it has the annular discharge. It does a really good job at wide open and it does a really good job at cruise speeds for gas mileage. But if you really are looking for gas mileage, you want either this one, which is the thermal quad, or this one, which is the Rochester Quadrajet. 
These things get mixed the fuel so well, you'll get some very good gas mileage. See, they're also spread bore. All right, if your goal is to just, this performance gas mileage isn't as, uh, as desired, then probably more like one of these Holly 750 or 650 or 850. One, they're more of a performance minded carburetors. These things are excellent at wide open throttle. They do a good job at idle and all the other locations, but this is excellent at wide open throttle. Now, if you're going to go with a Carter, I would recommend an AFB because we got mixers in all four corners and there's you can get them in fairly large CFM, I believe up to 750, maybe 800, I don't know. Um, but anyway, you get good wide open performance out of these. The ABS is good. It's very easy to tune, but it does not do as good a job of mixing the fuel at wide open throttle as the AFB or the, the Holly four barrel. Thinking about building yourself a small six cylinder or a very small V8, real tiny one, and you were looking for something that was, uh, uh, that would work for maybe a, a six cylinder, whether it's a 300 Ford or maybe a 250 Chevy or 225 slant six, you could get one of these four barrels and they got this, it's a 390, it is tiny. And it does a really good job of mixing the fuel especially at wide open throttle and because these barrels are so small the velocity stays high for those little engines so that's a that's a good option okay now which one's easy to work on all of these carburetors are easily tuned there's all kinds of videos on YouTube about how to do it Holly obviously has probably the most stuff out there the most information out there they are all the way around uh, very easy to work on uh, they have all kinds of applications available this carburetor here this Rochester does really good for mild applications now there are people out there that are savvy enough to make this thing work for really high performance type setups and uh, those guys have spent a lot of time and really know this carburetor where what the different size metering rods and jets would be so these can be good carburetors but the information out there is getting smaller and smaller and the amount of part availability it's not as good I'm sure the people that work on them know exactly where to get those so this this carburetor here is really and more of a stop at application is probably very good if you're using a if you want to keep your car stock you're running a Chevy an Oldsmobile a Buick a Pontiac something like that that came with one of these they can be tuned they can be used for easily for mild applications all the problems that these carburetors have can be worked on and can be made better Okay, one thing to consider is vacuum secondary carburetors like this one, or this one, or this one. Vacuum secondary carburetors are excellent for small engines like 273s or a 302, especially if they're not highly modified. Because now you can have the four barrel that's decent enough to make good horsepower, but small enough to create good torque because it will only give the engine the carburation it needs if it's tuned correctly. Let's talk about the Rochester Quadrajet. All right. This carburetor is excellent for gas mileage, very small primaries, mixes the fuel very well, and makes good power at wide open throttle. The problem is, is these secondaries don't mix fuel real good. Mm -hmm. They have basically a tube that sticks out that the fuel discharges from called a sewer pipe mm -hmm. but it's very easy to tune so you can drive around on these all day long and when you go to the racetrack if it's 
a day where you need to make a jet change, you can take this screw out. This comes out and there's two metering rods in here and you can change the size of those metering rods and increase or decrease the amount of fuel flowing through the secondaries on this carburetor. So it's easy to work on. Um, it has one single float bowl in the middle and that it's hard to keep fill so you have to put a very high fuel pressure going into the carburetor. It needs to maintain a high pressure. Now let's talk about this thermoquad. Very excellent carburetor. Mixes the fuel well at low speeds. Got a small primary on it. Excellent vin, uh, booster Vinci. nozzle in it. This carburetor's got two float bowls. So that gives you twice as much filling capability. Um, the problems with these carburetors that I heard people complain about the most is this plastic body and this plastic body would warp and heat. If your engine's getting hot enough to warp this, you're in trouble anyway. Okay, so that is not a legitimate gripe. There are other problems. There are pieces that they're glued together and sometimes they come apart. But as far as this body warping, that's not a legitimate gripe. You got another problem if that's happening. Now let's talk about a Holly carburetor. Okay. These parts are super available. They're very easy. You can adjust the floats from the outside. They have a little sight screw you can take out. You can adjust the float while the fuel pump is on or the engine's running. Um, it's very tunable. When the secondaries come in, if it's a vacuum secondary, of course, if it's mechanical and you got a double pumper, that works. That's tunable, very tunable. You can have a mechanical choke. You can have an electric choke. You can cut the choke off if you want. All the different little problems that these carburetors have from a small cam to a big cam can be fixed easily. They're, these are wonderful wide open throttle carburetors. These, one of the things I've heard people say wasn't good about these carburetors is the power valve has a diaphragm in it and that diaphragm can blow and when it blows it will the the hole for it is here and when it blows fuel will pour out of it and make it run rich at an idle and of course it'll be rich at a cruise too but it makes it run rich and when i asked well how's the power valve blowing out they said well if it backfires it'll blow out the power valve and all I can say about that is if your engine is backfiring and you're the mechanic, maybe you need a new mechanic. Probably. Because these, this is easy, tunable, parts are available. Now, there's a lot of misinformation about even the tuning on these. I'm going to do some videoing on tuning a carburetor. It won't just be for Holly, but there's a couple things that people have never explained right I've watched multitudes of YouTube channels they do not give you the proper information on power valve so we're gonna do that and they do not give you proper information on idle circuit so we're gonna do a video about that well cool Jacob we got to sit and talk about carburetors for a little while we got a few things figured out we got some more things to talk about later but I hope you had fun. We did our little demonstration and all that. Did you enjoy it? Yes, I did, Pop. Well, good. Let me have this right here. Okay, then. Well, you are the future. You are the future of hot rodding and muscle cars. Yep, so, that's right. Thank you for sitting here and listening to some old man rant about carburetors. All right, then. I hope you learned something. I hope you do, too.